Hi, this is James McElroy, and you're watching Richard Metal Fan, and keep it fucking metal, man. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Richard Metal Fan Interviews. This is episode number 104, and today's guest, we're talking to James McElroy. James McElroy is the guitarist for the band Chaos Sanct. He also plays in NFT, and he also was a guitarist for one of my favorite bands ever, Cradle of Filth, for a little bit. So yeah, we're going to be talking to him about his journey as an artist from where he starts now, pretty much what inspired him to play guitar, and much, much more. So, without further ado, let's go talk to James. So what's up, guys? I'm here with James McElroy from Chaos Inc., NFT, Order of Apollyon, and he used to play in a little-known band called Cradle Filth. So how are you doing today, James? I'm all right. I'm not too bad. Yourself? Doing pretty well. Can't complain. It's a good, lovely afternoon here in Georgia, where I'm at in the U.S. Where are you at? Yeah, I'm in Belgium these days, so, you know, I left the U.K. like two years ago, and now I live in, well, I was going to say sunny, but it's not particularly sunny here, so, you know, Belgium. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, basically, kind of like the format of, of this is I want to do like a rundown of your catalog and talk about, like, your musical journey from where you start to now but i'm always curious let's take you back to a long time ago what were like the first bands that got you into metal that made you want to start playing guitar oh, it it's definitely got to be made iron maiden i bought these tapes when i was like 11 10 or 11 years old and i kind of bought them for like a friend's birthday and i think they're the first three maiden albums but you know i looked at the cover and that's cool and then i just opened one and went i can have two that's okay. I'll just listen. I'll just listen to one. And I liked it so much. I opened the other one, and then he only got one. So uh, I basically just listened to those tapes to death. I think it's Killers and Number of the Beast. I just love those albums, and after I just got well into them, they're just all made and made and for ages. And then you know, because there was all the glam rock stuff and you know the cock rock, loved that as well. Because I just always, I've always loved melody. And then at some point, while watching. You know, Headbangers Ball at the time. This little video came on by this, you know, this small little band called Megadeth, and it was like Holy Wars, and that just blew me away. Yeah. And after that, straight to Megadeth, and I was like, oh, and that album is so good. Yeah, like, it's my all-time so favorite album, album. Rest in Peace. It's like it is the definitive speed metal, thrash metal album. My nothing comes close. It is, you know, perfect from start to finish. And then, yeah, and then it just got heavier. Then, you know, at the time, you got Sepultura when they did uh, Beneath the Remains, and that was that was awesome. And then there was Morbid Angel, and when they did Covenant, and then Domination. So I just spiraled from there. Awesome. And, of course, a lot of people know you from, of course, Chaos Sanct, NFT, and obviously Cr Cradle of Filth. What were, like, your bands even before all that? Before that? Yeah. Well, I I started playing with like just local bands in Belgium. So I had like a played of and these were like, you know, these teenage bands and stuff. So there was a band called Ash I played in that did my first gigs with them. And then there was another band called Aggressive Culture. And then the next thing literally was Cradle. So, you know, it was a bit of a a weird step up. But awesome. And how'd you join? By accident. Possibly. It was all a bit of a, because um, I, I knew Adrian, just when I was seeing, seeing him around and stuff like that. And one day I said, why don't you audition? And then I just went, all right, well, I'll give that a go. And I just I just pretty much figured I, was, I wasn't going to get it and that they'd find someone else. But I was just going to audition for, laugh, for fun, for a laugh, really, just because, you know, the, the opportunity was there. I can always go home and say, I played with these guys and that was kind of cool. And um from one audition became a second audition became a third audition became a fourth one and then suddenly i find myself going oh, do you want to come play some gigs with us so i hadn't really expected it it's not like one of those things where you go off and go yeah i'm gonna get this i'm i'm, I'm super amazing i'm gonna ace this like you know like, like you would in some kind of exam or whatever i was just doing it going oh, okay i'm just a little i don't know small little country boy from belgium you know, even if I get to play with these guys, that's cool. And then suddenly I find myself gigging with them and playing guitar. It was a, it was a bit surreal. Awesome. And, so, and I believe you, you said that you joined Cradle in like February of 
Yeah, that's when I played my first gigs. But um, I started auditioning in, was it, I think July or August 2002. And they were supposed to play some gigs at the end of December. So initially, um, I was I should have been playing my first gigs around December, about 20 years ago, actually. Wow. But then they got cancelled. So, and then, you know, when they cancelled, the same thing in my head went, you know, oh, they'll find someone else now. And I didn't really expect to get asked to do the the first couple of shows and then the first European tour I did. I just really didn't expect it at all. Yeah. And do you remember like your first like like tour with Cradle of Filth? Yeah, I do. Oh, I remember the first gigs with Cradle of Filth. Because I mean I they flew out to flew out to Russia and I just remember sitting in the dressing room before that going, I have no idea how to paint my face at all. I have no idea how to put this makeup on. Just looking at it going, like, what do I do? This is this is this is odd. And I think Sarah at the time helped me put it on and then you know, you, you kind of learn quickly. And then I just remember going on stage and going, and I had massive stage fright for some reason. And I did for quite a while. And I just remember shaking for the whole gig, but just headbanging anyway, going, ah, just get through this, just swing your hair about. And I came off stage, just like on this massive high, going, oh, this is awesome. And then, you know, I thought it got a little bit easier there and there. And uh, and then, yeah, off to Europe. And it was, it was, it was cool, just playing shows every single night. And then, Going all 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 across, it's loads of fun. I remember that. Yeah, moving bus and everything, and yeah, it was it was it was awesome. Yeah, and did you do like the Ozfest back in in, in that time, like around two thousand three? Yeah, so you know, you came back off um, European tour, and they they said, "Oh, do you want to do Ozfest with us?" And I was like, "Okay, cool, I'll do that." And that was that was a that was a mad tour. That was that was like I think eleven weeks or ten and a half weeks. And I, I just had given up where I lived, so I stopped paying rent and just moved out, and all my stuff was somewhere. And the only route home I had was that tour bus in America, which had like some massive pink pony on the side, which was hilarious. But, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> but literally, that yeah. So you kind of think it's like yeah, evil band touring a concept album about Satan, and then you're living in a pink pony bus. So, you know, but it was cool. The Oscar, the Oscar was just. You know, you'd, you'd play at three o'clock, three, half past three every single day, and then you'd be, you know, off running around with all kinds of chaos. And yeah, it was, it was, it was a great tour, that. Yeah. Yeah. And tell me about like your first album with Cradle of Filth and Amphetamine. I love this yeah. album. This is probably in like my second or third favorite Cradle of Filth album. What was the recording process like making this album? Um, well, it was all, all very new to me. And, it, you know, it was, it was, it was cool. I think the, I think the year before, the, um, they were writing sessions like they went to a studio in Wales to kind of like write stuff, and um, I do a little bit here and there with Paul. And is is yeah, it was kind of all new and fun, exciting to write all this stuff. And then the recording process was just um, all new to me as well. And that was you know looking back, it's just one of those things where you learn a lot in a very short period of time. So it was it was cool. Yeah, yeah, and tell me about like the the whole like album cycle, like to like touring touring for this because, like I said, this is a, a great album. One of my favorite songs is, of course, it's like Nymphetamine I mean, Fix. I also like Gilded Cunt. It's just a freaking ass beater of a song. So, what is the touring cycle? I think we, I think before the album came out, um, it was like a South American tour. Come back from that, it's like you know, a couple of days or, or a couple of weeks, and then it's off to the US. For like a whole tour, no, then back. That tour? Oh, I think that that tour that was a tour with Arch Enemy and Bleeding Through, and um, I what, think what a lineup. Who else? There was another band on that built, and I've completely forgotten. And it's probably really bad that I've forgotten it because yeah. they were awesome as well. Um, oh, I was on the tip of my tongue. It was a band from Seattle. Hmm. And I can't remember, but they were they were cool. I do like their songs, but I've completely forgotten their name. But yeah, oh, oh it's uh it's Hymza. that's the one. Yeah, I had to like Himza. look it up. It's Arch Enemy, Cradle of Filth, Hymza, Bleeding Through. What a lineup. I haven't heard that name in, yeah. that name in a minute. I had to I quickly look it up just to uh, just to see what see if you're what you were talking about. I mean, come on, I mean, for 
me that was that was awesome because you know I I what was it I discovered the Arch Enemy Stigmata album when I was like I don't know nineteen years old or twenty something like that. Like a friend gave it to me. Yeah, he listened to this, and I was obsessed with that album. And I was obsessed with Chris Amos playing. And my cam was playing. I loved Carcass. So it was like, it's just going to like a shit, man. I'm, you know, I'm touring with Arch Enemy. This is absolutely mind blowing. And the same, it's the same thing happened when, I took, when we did the tour of Type of Negative. That's one, of my, that's one of my favorite all time bands. And I'm just sick. I get to watch these guys every night. It's really cool. I was a total fanboy, by the way. I got all my CD signed. Wow. <laughs> I think they were quite, I think Joey was quite embarrassed by it. Maybe Pete as well. But yeah, I got my CD signed because it was like, this is amazing. And that was with Moonspell as well. Wow. So yeah. And these were all bands like I, I grew up listening to. And I, I'd seen live and stuff like that. And had their albums and so I was just chatting to them. It was really, really cool. It was, like, it was amazing. Damn, I would have loved to see that. To see those tours. Too bad I was only like nine, ten years old. <laughs> that makes me feel old. Sorry. Yeah, I don't want to type for Moose was awesome. But, but the, other, the other cool thing about touring Fred in those days is they had like they had like um stage performers, like circus guys, like two people from the circus. And they just do all this mad stuff, like walk out on stilts, like dress as spiders, do, do the whole rope thing, angle grinding. And it was just literally one of those feelings where you're on stage, it was like total chaos. It was brilliant. Like you'd be standing there playing guitar and all of a sudden there's some someone riding a human spider walking on the stage yeah and then also during that time he did like a live album piece through superior firepower power tell me i think it's one of my one of my yeah. favorite live concerts tell me about that because i believe this was recorded in like france in 2005 yeah it's like it says like court recorded in paris in france i think on so maybe i don't think i think it's one of the two shows i can't remember which mm -hmm. one but um yeah it was just like just, just like recording another show and, and just walking out, except there's cameras whizzing everywhere, and it was, it was, it was really fun to do and stuff like that. And I do remember that show, but yeah, I can't think that came out all right, didn't it? Although I know, I, I think I've watched it once, and then I can't watch it again because it's weird yeah. watching yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you also like like work? Were were part of like Viva La Bam with like Bam Margera? Yeah, there was that as well. I, that, that was one of those really odd things. That's like you, just, you fly over there, you walk into a field, you, you know, play a song or you know, mime to a song in, in that case. Yeah. And then, you know, you just, and then, then, then it's kind of over. And then you go like, oh, okay. I didn't even see that episode until like six, nine months or a year later. So, yeah. But that was that was fun. I mean, I I, I really did really love him. He was a nice guy. Yeah, and I remember here seeing the, like like I have a, a quote on the back of this DVD from Bam Margera saying, "If you don't love this band, that you you don't then you don't know shit about fuck." <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that, that was strange because I think on an amphetamine tour, and we, yeah. we didn't even know he actually liked amphetamine. He, he just turned up one of the gigs and just turned out he's like, "Oh, I love this song. I love this song and stuff like that." And I was like, "Wow." That's that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, and I know he's gonna be in Atlanta next month. He's part of this like horror convention called Days of the Dead. I want to try to ask him about that. Yeah, no, he's 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 cool, man. Yeah, but then if, I think around the time in two thousand five, you left Cradle Filth for a little bit. Then I believe you wanted to you started up Chaos Act. Yeah. How'd you f start up up that that band? Um, oh, well, I, I, I left Cradle and I'd not been really doing anything for a couple of months. And um, I decided I was just going to get back into playing, you know, seven strings for, for the hell of it. Because, you know, I I bought myself off one because I was a massive Morbid Angel fanboy. So it had to be the black over and the green pickups because that's the one from the God of Emptiness video and the one that Trey Azatov, he played on tour. So I bought that and I just started messing around on it. I started writing and I thought, hey, well, just see um how i can pull a band together and i just you know started collecting people and just asking people i knew here about and just building it up and i think i only managed two demos of that band and then i think it just 
just never managed to record an album of it, which is a shame. But you know, it's just the way things go sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That I think it was around the time you came back to Cradle of Filth, and you did probably Darkly, Darkly Venus of Versa. Like nobody yeah. really talks about this album. Tell me about that. Well, um, well, it's about that time. It's like the, for some reason they they called me up and said, "Oh, do you want to come do some gigs?" Because I think Charles can do some gigs. I thought, "Yeah, sure, why not? I'll do." tour and some gigs that's that's fine for fun because i think at the time where i was working they were laying off people so i thought you know I'll just go and do something else for a while and i came back off that and then started um writing with paul and just got this whole album got this whole album done and then you know recorded it but those, those are fun sessions because it was like i think I felt i was a bit more involved and it was fun to do a fast album because i think the album is fairly fast in some places and it's like it, it kind of grabs you i think i'd like to say i don't know what your opinion is on it yeah but i love it I mean, it's a pretty much dark hence like the whole album artwork and shit yeah, yeah but that's kind of fun doing that special edition box and you know all, all that cool stuff in there that was that was that was good fun yeah yeah, I only have like the two. I think it's a two CD because I, I think you you had like enough a lot of material, so you, so you just had to make like a second disc. Yeah, no, it was it was, it was really fun right now. But I think that's that's one that like had the most fun doing and recording and everything like that. It's just yeah, yeah. And then of course, like you also have your cur other other current bands, uh, Chaos Sanctum, and NFT, NFD. Yeah, NFT. what's well, what's up? I'm trying anymore. to. Yeah. Not anymore. They're, they're both dead as far as I'm well. NFT is still going, but I'm no longer a part of that. And um Chaos Tank, I think, is pretty much dead as well, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, it says that you're just active because you only have the Ascendance of Impurity EP from 2009. Yeah. yeah. So that's 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 a while ago. Yeah, so 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 is there any chance of like trying to like make make new new albums and stuff, or is it just nah, well, eh, whatever? Actually, funnily enough, you know, because um, I think, you know, pandemic puts a perspective on everything when, when you, you know, go through that sitting at home all the kind of time. I mean, we did um, a demo track with Cam from Massacre and Dave um, used to be in Cradle. Oh, wow. Uh, did that, did one track of that. I don't think anything else came of that, but that's, that's floating around somewhere. That was kind of good fun. And I think for years after my operation, I've not been, you know, had that feeling to want to go and do music again. I think I was kind of burnt out for some reason. And, you know, neck surgery just really did flatten me for quite a while in terms of playing and, and weird stuff like that, getting back into it. But then I think the pandemic happened and I moved back in. I've actually just started um, playing with people I used to know for fun again. And so I've been writing a load of stuff, putting that together and um, should actually be getting something done next year, recording wise. Yeah, I'm, I'm hope, hoping so, man. And will you, is there a possibility maybe you could do a tour, tour or stuff or just now? Nah? I don't know about touring at the moment. It, it depends like if anyone likes it, oh. <laughs> if you're honest about it. Like, you, can, you can write whatever you want and then bring it out and if no one likes it, you're never going to tour, but. I think I think it's pretty pretty cool stuff. It's um I think it's an extension of Chaos Sanct, but then it's gone in a slightly different direction. But it's still the kind of same 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 vibe as that. We've been having lots of fun guitar melodies and work and stuff like that. All right, all right, and kind of like like to wrap the things up. Zappa, just a great great to talk to you. Is just anything else you want to say to just like close it out? No, nah, it's um. Still alive, <laughs> so, <laughs> haven't died, so it's all good. Huh. And yeah, I mean, working, working on new stuff, and that that should be fun to to bring out and let people hear when it's um recorded. Awesome. So everybody, James Mc McLoy, we'll see you next time.